Thank you, Craig, and it's good to join with you this morning. Good to uh, have you join us online. Um, I want to look this morning for a few minutes at Hebrews chapter 11. And so if you have a Bible there at home, why don't you grab it because we'll be looking through it together or you can look up on your phone on Bible Gateway um, and uh, we'll study that passage together. You know, sometimes I wonder how I ever managed before there was the YouTube repairman. A while ago, our dishwasher started acting a little temperamental. I was actually standing by the sink in our kitchen when I felt my socks getting wet. And that, that wet sock thing is a, is a pretty miserable feeling. And it was even more miserable when I realized that the water was pouring out from under the dishwasher and all over the floor. And I opened it up inside, and even though the cycle for the dishwasher was all finished, it was full of dirty, grimy water. So I, uh, I got a scoop, and I scooped it out and dumped it in the sink, and then I thought myself quite wise. I pulled out the filter, which was kind of grimy, and I washed it off, and I put it back in, and I congratulated myself that I had done a good job. But, you guessed, a few days later, I was in the kitchen, I opened the dishwasher, the cycle was all finished, and it's full of this dirty, grimy water. Now, in days of old, I would have headed down to the basement and searched around for some long-lost uh, owner's manual and uh, be shouting up the stairs, asking Sharon where she'd put it. Of course, it would be me who had lost it. Um, or perhaps I would even have gone down to home hardware and bought a new dishwasher. But, you know, I don't need to do that anymore because now there's the YouTube repairman. So I just Googled in the make and model of my dishwasher, and lo and behold, there was not just one YouTube repairman. There was a whole squadron of YouTube repairmen with all kinds of advice. And so like a thirsty camel, I just drank in all that they could show me. I spent about an hour looking at all these YouTubes, and I followed their instructions, and I, I watched what they did. They said, use vinegar and baking soda and clean out your dishwasher. So I, I did that. And then secondly, clean out the filter. Well, I'd already done that, so I checked those off. Still, it wasn't working. So then they said, detach the drain hose and check for blockage. So I, I reversed the YouTube and I watched it again to see how to do that. And I crawled in without getting a crick in my neck with my flashlight and my screwdriver. And I pulled the drain hose off. And what did I find? Right in the drain hose, there's a shell, like, you know, like a shell from the beach, like a snail shell or something. And it's blocking the passage. How did that ever get in there? So I pulled it out. And just like that, the problem was solved. Not a drop of water in the bottom of my dishwasher. I sometimes manage. How, how did I ever manage? I wonder how I ever managed before that YouTube repairman. You see, to get the problem solved, I needed more than correction. I needed more than the written manual. I needed someone to show me how to do it. Someone who knew what they were doing. Someone who had done it before. And someone who, needed, who was able to do it successfully. I needed an example to follow. And in a nutshell, that is the message of Hebrews chapter 11. So if you turn in your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 11, you'll find that it comes after the first 10 chapters of Hebrews, where the writer has given us a, a lot of important teachings about the superiority of Christ. He has shown how the cross of Christ is fulfilled and superseded all the Old Testament sacrifices. Jesus, he says, is the once for all answer to man's moral failure. Therefore, given this reality from chapter 1 to 10 in Hebrews, he admonishes them, don't give up, don't go back, keep moving forward in your faith. So in Hebrews chapter 11, the writer begins to tell them stories, stories of faith, stories of great faith, stories of believers from the past who had gone through difficult times, stories of people who kept going in spite of their situation, stories of faith which really worked. I suppose we all learn in different ways. Some of us learn by reading, some by listening, some by watching. For me, I think I learn best by example. Someone to show me how it's done, someone to encourage me to do it. Hence my friendship with the YouTube repairman. Someone who knows what they're doing and can show me how it's done. This is the message of Hebrews 11. And in Hebrews 11, we are given real live examples of faith, encouragement of those who have gone before us. This is not just faith in theory. This is faith in action. 
So beginning in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 4, one example after another is recalled. All examples of living faith. And many of them begin with this two-word phrase, by faith. Look in your Bible together with me there. Beginning at Hebrews 11 verse 4, it says, by faith, Abel offered to God a more acceptable sacrifice. By faith, Enoch was taken up. By faith, Noah, being warned of God, built an ark. Verse 8, by faith, Abraham obeyed. Verse 11, by faith, Sarah. Verse 20, by faith, Isaac. Verse 21, by faith, Jacob. Verse 22, by faith, Joseph. Verse 31, by faith, Rahab. Sixteen times we find that phrase, by faith. Hebrews 11 is a veritable overview of Old Testament history. Abel, Enoch, Noah, Abraham, Sarah, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, and Rahab. Men and women who believed, but more than just believed in an intellectual way, believed with all their heart. For faith is more than believing in something. It's about trusting someone. In spite of difficulty, in spite of hardship, in spite of all odds, these were people who unreservedly put their trust in the Lord. They staked their lives and their future on God's Word. And because they believed, and because they obeyed, because they put their faith into action, they experienced God's blessing. Now the question comes, was it easy? And the answer is no. For Abel, it cost him his life. For Noah, he was treated as a fool. For Abraham, it meant the loss of his homeland, a life of uncertainty. For Moses, it meant a loss of prestige and position. So the message comes through loud and clear to this struggling group of New Testament Christians, these Hebrew Christians, rejected and outcast by their community, persecuted and marginalized by Roman society. The message is you can do it. These are examples and encouragements from God's Word for you. Through faith, these outcasts of the past overcame. Through faith, there is power to go on. Now, I guess the question is, is, did that message make a difference? Are we not the answer to that question? Those believers not only trusted through times of difficulty, but they shared their faith with others who passed it on to others and others. And here we are 50 generations later. We are the outcome of that step of faith. Now, I also want to suggest to you this morning that those examples of faith, those women and men who inspire the Hebrew Christians, are an inspiration and an example for us today. They are people who can show us what it means to live by faith, people who could show us how it's done. Now, as I was preparing this message, I, I thought, how am I going to manage all these examples of faith? Should I kind of take them all on with a little short lesson on all 16 of the examples? or? Or should I look at a few in detail? And maybe you should be thankful. I decided just to look at a few in detail. Look with me at the first example that I want to look at. Hebrews 11, verse 8, which is the example of Abraham. Hebrews 11, verse 8 says, By faith Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was to receive. And a large section of Hebrews 11 is dedicated to the story of Sarah and Abraham. The story comes from Genesis 12, in the Old Testament, the call of Abraham to leave the ancient city of Ur of the Chaldees with all its grandeur and in faith to begin an incredible journey. Turning your Bibles to Genesis chapter 12, verse 1, I think you'll find this scripture on the screen. Now the Lord said to Abraham, go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land I will show you, and I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. Verse 3, and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. The word which best summarizes Abraham's faith is the word obedience. By faith, Abraham obeyed. Obedience to leave all he once knew. Obedience to seek out a new land. Obedience to give up all he possessed. Look again at Hebrews 11, verse 8, the entire verse. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he went out, and here's an interesting phrase, he went out not knowing where he was going. Now the question arises, 
How could he do that? How could he obey when he didn't know where he was going? Think of it this way. Abraham was confident of his calling. He was to leave his former life behind. Abraham was confident of his mission, that he would found a great nation, and through him all the nations of the world would be blessed. Confident of his calling and confident of his mission. Think of it this way. Because Abraham was certain of his calling and certain of his mission, he could handle the uncertainties that life would bring his way not certain of where his calling and mission would take him. And that is true in my life as a Christian, and it was true in the life of the first disciples of Jesus. As Jesus walked along the shores of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew and James and John. They were fishermen, and they were mending their nets. Hear the call of Jesus, come follow me. Hear the mission of Jesus, I will make you fishers of men. Their calling and their mission was clear, but did they have any idea of where that journey of faith would take them? They could never have imagined. As believers in Jesus, our calling is clear and our mission is clear, but the adventure of faith is a pilgrimage full of uncertainty. This past year of pandemic has certainly underlined that, just how uncertain life can be. Not only has the pandemic brought sickness to many, it has brought disruption to many, many more. And it's brought significant changes to how we do church together, sometimes in small groups and backyards, sometimes earlier this morning in the parking lot here at the church at Woodside and Elmira, and sometimes in an online format like we are doing right now. Perhaps Hebrews 11 verse 8 can be our verse for uncertain times. I don't know, if, do we have it in the screen there, Hebrews 11 verse 8? I think we do. Um, heading forward not knowing exactly where we're going next, certain of our calling, clear on our mission, but not knowing what is next. This morning I was asked to bring a short report to you from Citizens Church, which is a church outreach from Woodside here. And as you might remember, at the beginning of the pandemic, back in April 2020, Woodside launched a new congregation. Now, I suppose I should add the obvious that as the team led by Darcy and Elizabeth Duick prayed and planned to launch that new congregation, they could never have imagined what an unusual way that church would begin, right in the middle of a countrywide shutdown. Hebrews 11 verse 8 certainly began to apply to us at Citizens Church, stepping out in faith, but uncertain what the next step would be. So we ask that you continue to pray for us. In spite of the pandemic over the past year, Citizens has grown from about 40 adults and children to around 75. So we have two key prayer requests for our church family here at Woodside. The first is that Citizens would be able to find a more permanent situation regarding our meeting for Sunday worship. At present, we meet at Trinity United Church, which is a fabulous facility, and the folks there have been so gracious in sharing the building with us. However, Trinity United plans to redevelop that property and actually take the building down um, and turn it into a, a multi-use apartment housing complex. But thankfully, in the meantime, they've kindly allowed us to continue to meet. So pray for our long-term needs there. Secondly, pray that we would recognize elders at Citizen Church. At present, we're under the direct leadership of the Woodside elders, but we need to develop internal leadership eternal eldership within citizens. So those are two requests we would have. A clear calling and a clear mission, but citizens is stepping out in faith, not completely sure of what the next steps are. Now continue with me in Hebrews chapter 11 and look down at verse 10. The story of Abraham's faith continues. Abraham was confident of his calling and confident of his mission. He was also confident of his ultimate destination. Look at Hebrews 11, verse 10, verse 14, and verse 16. Let me read them to you. For he, that is Abraham, was looking forward to the city that has foundations, whose designer and builder is God. Verse 14, for people who speak thus make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. Verse 16, but as it is, they desire a better country, that is a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared for them a city, a country, a homeland, 
a city, somewhere to belong, a place to call home. This is Abraham's vision, his ultimate destination. Now, the land of promise, the land of Canaan, was a precursor to that country. Jerusalem was a shadow of the city, but they were faint foreshadowings of something much, much bigger. The ultimate city of God, the heavenly city, when God's rule is complete in the new heavens and the new earth, when it truly is fulfilled that God's will is done on earth as it is in heaven. And Abraham was looking for that ultimate reality. In the old book, Pilgrim's Progress, Pilgrim is encouraged with a glimpse of that celestial city, and it gives Pilgrim the strength to keep going forward. As Christians, we live out our faith in the here and now, but to live effectively in the here and now, we need to focus on something much, much bigger. We need to look beyond that which is temporary and look to that which is eternal. C.S. Lewis, in his book, Mere Christianity, makes this very interesting observation. He says this, if you read history, you will find that the Christians who did most for the present world were those who thought most of the next. The apostles themselves who set on foot the conversion of the Roman Empire, the great men who built up the Middle Ages, the English evangelicals who abolished the slave trade, all left their mark on earth precisely because their minds were occupied with heaven. It is since Christians have largely ceased to think of the other world that they've become so ineffective in this one. Aim at heaven, and you'll get earth thrown in. Aim at earth, and you'll get neither. I must keep alive in myself, says Lewis, the desire for my true country, which I shall not find until after death. I must never let it get snowed under or turned aside. I must make it the main object of my life to press on to that country and help others to do the same. Abraham looked for a city, a better land, our ultimate destination. Now let me come to the second example of faith, and it's found in Hebrews 11, verse 23. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden for three months by his parents because they saw that the child was beautiful and they were not afraid of the king's edict. Here's the second example, the faith of Moses' parents. And Scripture emphasizes this, they were not afraid. If Abraham was obedient, Moses' parents were fearless. Now, this story also comes from the Old Testament, from Exodus chapter 1 and 2. And the backstory is the Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, is feeling threatened because of the growing Hebrew community. So he sends out an edict to the whole country that every male Hebrew child should be killed at birth. And actually, as you read that story, it's really interesting how the midwives handled that conundrum because you knew right and well that midwives were not going to be killing babies. And Moses' parents ignored the king's orders. And in the Exodus story, Moses' mother is noted for ingenuity in hiding her little baby in a basket on the Nile River. To say the very least, those were difficult times to be a parent. And yet today we celebrate the boldness of their faith. It did not matter to Moses' parents that the most powerful man in the entire world, the Pharaoh, had put a law in place. They were not afraid of the king's edicts. They were not afraid. What an example of faith. Parents who believed that the life of their tiny baby was worth much more than the orders of any king. As Christian parents today, bringing a child into the world is a step of faith. Thankfully, we're not slaves in Egypt, but raising children in today's world is an act of faith. Raising children, help them to, helping them to experience the reality of God's love and God's justice is an awesome task. Raising positive kids in a negative world requires bold faith. Fifty years ago, a young couple were expecting their third child, and 2020 and 2021 have been tough years, but 1971 was also a troubled year. The Cold War, Vietnam, racial tension, instability in the Middle East. Some suggested to the young couple that it really didn't make sense that they were bringing another child into such a troubled world. And the young couple struggled with their doubts, but the birth of that little child changed their perspective. And as they sifted through their feelings, they wrote these words. 
How sweet to hold our newborn baby and feel the pride and joy he gives, but greater still the calm assurance this child can face uncertain days because he lives. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future and life is worth the living just because he lives. The faith of Moses' parents was richly rewarded. Their sacrifice and their courage brought the deliverance of their people. For that little baby in the Nile becomes the strong man Moses who confronts the Pharaoh and says, let my people go, and leads them to freedom. Parents, you have no idea how God's God's seed could be multiplied through your faith. Don't give up. A child is an act of faith. Those are great examples of faith. The example of obedience, Abraham and Sarah. The example of boldness, Moses' parents. They were not afraid. But before we close, I I want to look with you at another section of Hebrews chapter 11. I I don't think we could ignore this. It begins at Hebrews 11, verse 32. And it's not just one example, but many, many examples, far too many to look at in detail, many examples of incredible faith. And this section is full of profound truth to encourage our faith in the most difficult of times. Look with me at Hebrews 11, verse 32. And what more shall I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David, and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, enforced justice, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the power of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, were made strong out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight, women received back their dead by resurrection. Up till now, the examples are all victory and triumph. And suddenly, right in the middle of this verse, something changes. Look at Hebrews 11:35b. Some were tortured, refusing to accept release, so that they might rise again to a better life. Others suffered mocking and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned. They were sawn in two. They were killed with the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, afflicted, mistreated, of whom the world was not worthy, wandering about in deserts and mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. These are shocking verses. The unjust suffering of the faithful. From the world's perspective, this looks like defeat. Yet all of these are examples of faith, examples of great faith. Hebrews 11, 32 to 35 tells of faith that overcomes against all odds. Look at those verses and the key words of that overcoming, ver- uh, those, that overcoming faith. Verse 32, conquered kingdoms, enforced justice, obtained promises, stopped lions, quenched fire, escaped the sword, mighty in battle. This is victorious faith. But then look at verse 35 to 38. This tells of a faith that endured even in the most difficult of circumstances. Look at those brutal words in 35 to 38. Torture, mocking, flogging, chains, imprisonment, stoned, sawn, killed, destitute, afflicted, mistreated. This is enduring faith. If we only hear the stories of victory, maybe falsely we could end up believing a success gospel, that everything will always be good. If we only hear the stories of endurance, we may be overwhelmed. But these are all stories of faith. Faith to overcome, faith to endure. And here's the key takeaway. In all of life, God's character does not change no matter the circumstance. God's goodness, God's faithfulness, God's smile of approval on people of faith is the same during times of victory and times of difficulty. Life's circumstances do not change the Lord's love for us. These examples of faith were a huge encouragement to the Hebrew Christians and they're an encouragement to us today. Faith is obedience taking God at His word. Faith is boldness, doing what is right no matter the whole world is against you. 
It is through faith that we experience unthinkable victory and receive the strength to endure unspeakable difficulty. Can I repeat that to you? It is through faith that we experience unthinkable victory, and it is through faith that we receive the strength to endure unspeakable difficulty. Courage, brother. Do not stumble. Though your path is dark as night, there's a star to guide the humble. Trust in God and do the right. Let the road be long and dreary and its ending out of sight. Foot it bravely, strong or weary. Trust in God and do the right. Perish policy and cunning. Perish all that fears the light. Whither losing, whither winning. Trust in God and do the right. Some will hate you, some will love you. Some will flatter, some will slight. Cease from man and look above you. Trust in God and do the right. Firmest rule and safest guiding. Inward peace and inward light. Star upon our path abiding. Trust in God and do the right. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for this great cloud of witnesses who encourage our faith. Men who endured and women who believed against all odds. Encourage us, strengthen us, so that we may be faithful in our Christian lives faithful to our generation. May your strength be made perfect through our weakness, for we ask it through the name of our suffering and victorious Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.